we were looking at the user agent and the user agent comes across when the browser requests a page. It comes across as part of the HTTP, HTTP request. And we saw how we can use that user agent to determine something about who's making the request. And specifically, in the first examples, we wanted to find out if they're on a mobile device or if they're on a desktop device or desktop laptop. So should we send them to, should we redirect them to the full version of the site or redirect them to a mobile version. Last time we actually took the same concept and went a little bit different path on it. Because we took the concept of, hey, we can, through our code, look at the user agent and based on the user agent, we're not going to redirect them to a different page, but we're going to customize the page that we send them, them through server-side scripting. All right. So if you remember the example I, we had, I grabbed the user agent, I looked at it, I set a couple variables to determine whether it was a mobile or a desktop site, and then based on those, I included different include files and, and things along those lines. So I made my web page dynamic based on the user agent. I made it sensitive to the user agent so that the user agent helped the, the PHP script in determining how it should output the page. All right. Our next step is getting into what is called WORFL. And WORFL stands for Wireless Universal Resource File. And I don't know what the L stands for. <laughs> but wireless universal resource file. Here's the basic idea of WORFL. If we accept the premise that from the user agent, we can tell some things about who's making the request. In our first pass, we looked at and we simply determined whether they're mobile or a desktop version. We can conclude that if we can get more information about them out of that user agent, we can do even a better job still in customizing the page for the device that has made the request. So mobile or desktop, that's one piece of information. It's a very small piece of information. But we can then get into more questions about the capabilities of the device. Does the device have a camera? Does the device have a phone? And so on and so on. What's the maximum width of the, the screen? What's the, what is the maximum height? All those things we can, with that information, we can dynamically create a web page that looks at the information that's important to us and outputs the relevant HTML for that situation. So we're really refining it. Instead of mobile, not mobile, we're going to look at more characteristics of this. Now, we've already seen, as you know, there's more devices every, every, you know, every, coming out every week and so on. Keeping track of what devices are out there, period, let alone what their capabilities are, would be overwhelming for an individual to do. All right? So both with WORFL and with the uh, mobile detection script that, that we've used, we're relying on, on sort of a third party making, their, uh, making their, their resources public. In the case of the browser detection script, we have We actually put into an include file that script. I forgot we put it in an include file, but that's good that we did. This check that we've adapted from Detect Mobile Browsers, 
which goes and grabs the user agent that's simply part of the HTTP request and then looks for all these different possibilities and if one of these conditions is true, essentially it's looking for certain strings within the user agent. It's looking for Android, mobile, Avant Go, IE mobile. It's looking for those strings. If it could find those strings anywhere in the user agent, it assumes it's a mobile device. And we're setting those variables likewise. Otherwise, we're setting them to indicate that we want to view the full site. If we ourselves had to come up with that, that would be a mammoth task. All right? You know, I, it would be very difficult to do. You know, so I'm happy someone else did that for us. And we can use that resource that they have so kindly made publicly available. If this would be difficult to create, imagine how difficult it would be, create, to, be to create a database that looks at the user agent and doesn't simply answer the question, is it mobile or is it not, but gives a whole list of capabilities, the screen size, the, whether there's a phone or not, whether there's a camera or not, and so on. That would be an overwhelming task. All right? This is an overwhelming task to begin with. That would be you know, uh, uh, an overwhelming task squared to not only identify all the different devices, of which there's thousands, but to identify all the capabilities of those devices. And that's exactly what Warful does. With Warful, we download a database that's stored in an XML file that contains information about all sorts of devices and their capabilities. We then download some code that helps us access that database. We download some code files that help us access that database. And then we can make use of those within our server-side scripts. All right. So let's go out uh, onto our server. I have it installed on uh, the CIS SQL server. Let's go out there and see the ingredients in the workflow. I, I started this last time. Uh, we'll continue um, now. So let me go in and FTP over to it. I'm going to go and we're going to look at, first of all, sort of the setup files. And I may pull these files down or, or not. I don't, I'm not sure. Within the Wurfle folder here, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But the most relevant stuff is in this resources file. All right. And... This Werfel XML is the database, the repository. This is what defines all the different devices and the capabilities of those devices. So let's look at this. I'm going to actually copy it locally so I can open it up in, a, in an editor. Let me try opening up an Internet Explorer. Here we go. This is a big file. It's still loading, actually. And it's in an XML file. At the top of the file is information concerning the, the version of it, um, and so on. And 
retrospect, maybe this was not a good idea. Opening it up in Internet Explorer. Wow, it's dead. Let me... There we go. Let me open up. And the simplest program I can think of, our friend Notepad. Actually, let's try WordPad because the way the line feeds work. All right, here we go. All right, we can see there's information that describes the capabilities of this file and talks about the licensing of it. All right, within this there's a list of devices. And the first device that they have listed is indicated sort of a, just a generic fallback device. In other words, if it can't figure out what kind of device you have, it's going to return this information. And again, what are some of the things it has? Does it have a mobile browser? Does it have the Nokia feature pack? The operating system on the device? The Nokia series value? Does it have a regular keyboard? How do you point? Mobile browser version? Is it a tablet? And all the way down the line, all these different. Is it a wireless device? Is it a bot? In other words, is this a search engine crawling your site as opposed to an actual device? And so on down the line. Actually, everything we're seeing here are a list of devices, or are, I'm sorry, a list of capabilities associated with that first device which is kind of the de default de uh, device if it can't figure out what it is. So all these lines of code describe that particular, you know, can it handle um, GIFs, can it handle JPEGs, can it handle this file format, and so on down the line. These are all things that we'll have access to when we write our code. So we can, on the server side, grab it and customize our code based on these values. Let me find the start of another device. All right. There's another generic one if it can't figure out what kind of device it is. All right. Here's a Nokia Generic Series 20. And again, the kind of mobile browser it's using, the Nokia, the Series 20, Edition 1. And there's a whole list of parameters. So this XML file contains, you know, tons of information about tons of different devices all of which we can write code to really refine our server-side script that's going to dynamically create a web page. Remember, the whole point of us doing this is that we want to dynamically create a web page taking into account the features of the device. In our first passes, that was very simplistic and we simply looked mobile or not. 
Now we're looking at more detailed information about the device. All right. So that's one piece of the Werfel world, this repository. So we'll download this repository. Um, and uh, we should update it periodically, right? Because as more devices come out, that will be expanded. The other piece of it is a whole set of files that Werfel uses to do its thing. All right? This is stuff I downloaded. I didn't create any of this. I didn't touch any of this other than to download it and to put it in a certain place. We could write our own code to parse that XML file, but they made it easier by supplying sort of libraries that we can use to access that repository and pull out the information that we can, that we need fairly easily. So that's another thing that happens when you load it. There is associated with this a storage folder that it uses internally. And to be honest, I'm not sure exactly how that works or what it uses it for, but it uses it. All right. If you delete those folders and we run a workful process, we'll notice that it will come back. So these folders will come back. So, so far the stuff that I've shown you is stuff that I've just downloaded and put out there in a folder on the web server where it can be accessed. The next stuff I'm going to show you is either my code or example code that I've, I've borrowed from uh, the Werfel site or code configuration files that I have manipulated. And those I'm going to copy and I'll post those um, to Angel when the class is done. Now I can't run this on this local server because again, I don't have those other files. I don't have the repository and I don't have um, the, the code to access the repository there. Likewise, unless you go and install Werfel, you won't be able to run the, these, uh, this code correctly on yours either. So I'm just bringing it to this machine for ease of editing and, and showing uh, the stuff. All right. First thing we have is a configuration that I took their example and I edited it for my circumstances. Let me open it. All right. What did I change? I changed the Werfel directory and the resource directory to be where those files live on my web server. In other words, on CIS SQL web server, my Werfel XML file is located physically in einetpub www root slash Werfel. And the resources file, oh, I'm sorry, the resources folder that contains that kind of stuff that is needed, all the other resources that are needed, is in einetpub www root Werfel resources. The rest of the stuff is stuff that you can configure if you want to, but again, the main things that you need to configure is to point your stuff to the appropriate directories. You can tweak some of these settings if you want. The one setting that I tweaked is I tweaked this match mode um, setting. It can either be performance or accuracy. All right. What does that mean? Well, performance means it will give you an answer quickly. Accuracy means it may take longer, but the answer that it will give you will be more accurate. So without going into the code, it's hard to go into more detail than that, all right, without having a good knowledge of their code. But when it's scanning through the XML file, it can try to do it quickly or it can try to do it accurately. You know. 
is like if you ask me to do a math problem, you know, multiply two four-digit numbers together. I could probably give you a quick answer that was really close, or kind of close, <coughs> or I could take my time and do it and come up with an answer as accurate. But it's difficult for me to give an accurate answer quickly. Well, Werfel's the same thing here. There's a lot of data going on in that XML file. And it can either give you a quick answer or it can be configured to give you a more accurate answer. There's some other parameters that you can tweak, but again, the essential ones are the folders to point to where those resources are. So this would be something that I would use as an include file in all my PHP pages that I want to use Werfel. Those other things are on their own. All right, those other things are, are you know, those other files I don't really deal with. I just need to hook to this file, and this file will do the talking to all the Werfel re, uh, resources and XML file. So let's look at a simple example that they gave us here. All right. Let's look at example. And that's the example that we started to look at last time. I'm not sure if we looked at the code or not. But this is the example that determined whether the device was a phone or not. All right, let's look at this. First of all, we need to include that Werfel configuration file that I was just looking at before. The nice thing is, is that's all we have to include. All right, all those other files, if we include the configuration file, all, uh, it's wired to talk to all those other files. So we, don't have to, we only have to worry about that one configuration file and getting that right. I then have a series of statements that I'm including that. I say include once, the idea is, is if I happen to have like nested include files, it would only include at one time. If it's already been included, it wouldn't include it a second time. I then am going and I'm asking for the information. Or asking for a pointer to the Werfel file. I can then go and grab the user agent, all right, this allows me to key in, we'll see where this code is from in a few minutes. This is from another test example, so ignore this code. This is a code we're interested in. This is a code that grabs the user agent from part of the HTTP request. And then pulls the device from that user agent. So this line actually goes and, and asks the Werfel manager to go and find the device associated with this particular HTTP request. We could actually clean up some of this code. I'll, I have to make a point to do a, a cleaner version of this uh, at some point. Because again, this code was copied from another example where you could either enter in the user agent or it would tell you your actual user agent. So at this point, we know what the device is. And now, we're going in and we're setting some booleans based on us querying that Werfel database. And again, we don't have to write our code directly to query it. 
This instruction here, for example, if you remember in, in all that XML, it had all these um, list of capabilities. It's looking to see if this particular device has that capability for it. So whatever device has made the request, it looks for that capability. And if it does, then has radio get set to true. Otherwise, it gets set to false. All right. Depending on if it's there or if it's in the XML file, what value it is. We then test for another capability that looks to see, um, does this have capability to make a phone call? these three conditions are true, that means that yes, this thing can make a phone call, in which case we can output the link to have a link, instead of having HTTP there, we have tele there, or tell there, and that actually creates a link like we saw last time that goes and makes a phone call. Otherwise, we can just display text that says call me at and just displays text that displays the phone number. So what's the recipe for this? The recipe for this is we make sure that the Werfel's installed correctly. And there, there's some test code. I probably should have showed you that one first, but there's some test code that can test your installation. You include your configuration file. You ask the configure you you ask Werfel to for the device that's making the request, you know, what is the device making the request, you can then ask of that device, do you have this capability? And based on these capabilities, you can write code to dynamically show some content or show other content. Here's the example I probably should have started with, this test PHP. Let me run it and show you what it outputs. And then we'll discuss about how it works. All right. I have to run it out on our web server. So I'll go here, open Google Chrome, and I'll type in the URL for it. I don't want localhost, I want CIS SQL. There we go. And I can run this test. And this test knows that I'm on Windows, that I'm running a Mozilla based browser, which Google Chrome is, and it knows some other information about it. My guess is it defaults this to 800 by 600, and it doesn't actually know. Um, that. Let's go and run this from IE. If we run this from IE, it tells us other information about this. That we're running Internet Explorer, Microsoft, and so on down the line. Down there I can type in the user agent. They're actually showing me up there the user agent that gets returned. I, if I know those strings, I can type them in there to test the Werfel to make sure that it works. That's why if you notice that other code I was showing you before, it was looking for a value called UA on the query string. That was leftover code from this example. Let's go and run the mobile emulator and see what it says.
So if I run the mobile emulator, it actually knows I'm running Opera and it knows that I'm on Windows. It gives me that information. It didn't get the resolution right because, again, in some respects, the Werfel app is going to be, or, or the Werfel API, is going to be vulnerable to the information it gets. All right? Um, Apple, for example, I was reading online today a little bit about this. Um, Apple doesn't give enough information in its user agent, in other words, whoever made the browser, that's the user agent and the device, doesn't give enough information to like tell is it an iPhone or an iPad or whatever. So it'll, Werfel will assume the lowest common denominator and just assume it's a small, smaller iPhone. Let's look in a couple of these devices. Let's look at my mobile phone and see what it tells me. Actually does this one pretty good. It tells me that I'm on a Motorola Droid X2, which I am. Resolution width, 540 pixels. Resolution height, 960 pixels. So it did a good job at pinning that one down and knowing its exact capabilities. Keep in mind that, like with all technology, you know, there's a promise and there's a potential, and then there's the ugly facts that sort of get in the way. All right? If there's any issue with the manner in which the mobile device identifies itself and presents its user agent to the server. Or if there's any issue where that's a device that's not known, you're not always going to get 100% accurate information. Um, I, was trouble, I was actually troubleshooting this for a while on this device. Because on this device, it actually tells me, it actually thinks it's a phone. So if I go and look at this page through here, whoops, all it really knows is that I'm running Android and it can't really tell um, what the resolution is, it doesn't know what kind of device it is, and so on. It might be that the user agent from this device um, isn't detailed enough to, to, to tell it, um, and they may not present the user uh, agent in a manner which the Werfel can look it up and, and tell more details about it. They want to have different devices. What, what do you have? Do you have a, a Nook? Try accessing this page. I'll go and put it in Notepad. CIS SQL dot learning ccc dot edu slash ciss two sixty eight slash werfel slash test php
Okay, what did it say? Does it have the resolution correct? Okay. So in this case, the Nookie did a good job identifying it. All right. We could then use that information to do that. Let's go to another page here and let's see if this works. Go to go to example.php. So the same thing except example.php. So it does not have a link, right? So it was smart enough on the Nook, the Nook was able to give enough information and the Werfel database was able to pull that information to know that that is not a phone. There's no phone as associated with it and therefore it doesn't display the link as it does on my machine or on my, on my device here. Yeah, it, it just lists, lists it as text. Right, it just lists it as text. Now if we look at mine, here's my phone and we saw this last time, it actually shows a link that I can call. All right, And if I press that it dials it and I, I believe I demonstrated that last time. Now, before we start getting too excited here, Here's a tablet, which is clearly not a phone, but according to this, it is a phone. So somehow it must not be identifying itself correctly, or maybe there's a bug in Werfel, or maybe I don't have something updated correctly, or something. All right. I went crazy trying to update this and, 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 and test this and, 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 and trying to figure out what was going wrong until I realized might not be my problem. <laughs> you know, everything does seem to be installing correct. It works on my phone, it works on other devices, and so on. Here's another example that I want you to take a look at uh, on the Nook. Um, actually, where, where do I want to go? Go to example two. All right, so go to that link, okay. example two. So this is a tablet. This is a tablet, yes. So what does it say on that one that it's a phone? It says it's a phone. Okay. No, it says it's a phone. Oops. So... This one it says, this is a mobile phone, the Samsung Galaxy tablet. My phone, it knows it's a mobile phone and it says it's a mobile phone. And the desktop browser, it knows that that's a desktop web browser. Right, because it's a phone. If you go to, that, you went to example? Okay. Ah, uh, again. Uh, right. In other words, and again, this gets back to the, what I was talking about before. Apple doesn't really give enough information on that user agent for Werfel to know specifically what Apple thing you have. So therefore it sees an iPod, thinks it's a mobile phone. It would probably do the same thing if you had an iPad. All right. Go to that test. What does the test show?
the test PHP. Okay. Interesting. When it did before, as in when? Like a minute. Okay. <laughs> I was say, because earlier, like, like an hour or so ago, I was playing with the one file. So if like early, you know, if before meant Monday, then I could see, but. No, like uh, that's interesting. Uh, interesting. All right, so what can we learn from this? We can learn that it can do some great things, but it isn't perfect. All right. Let's look at the code for this one and the code for, actually, let's look for the, at the code for example two and let's spend some time talking about how we could actually use this other than just like what we're doing here of demonstrating the functionality of it. All right, let's look at this example two, the one that correctly identified that uh, most of the devices, except it thought the iPod was a phone and it thought my tablet was a phone. So let's look at this code. All right. Again, I should, in fact, I'm going to go and do it in this example. I'm going to delete all this stuff. Because really, this is a line that we're interested in. requesting device equals the Werfel manager get device for HTTP request. This dollar sign underscore server is the object, build an object within PHP that models the server request. So any information about the server is going to be contained, I'm sorry, um, any information about the request being made is going to be uh, in that um, server variable. And we're grabbing the requesting device. We then have a series of statements that, if statements, that look to see, and this is sort of a shorthand in PHP, that looks and says, is this a wireless device? If that equals to true, then set is wireless to true. Otherwise, set is wireless to false. Sort of a fancy way to do an if statement. You do a logical operation on two things, and you take the result and set it to there. Likewise, I do it with a smart TV, tablet, phone. And then I check uh, with the series of if statements and check to see, all right, Is it a mobile device? If it's, if it's either wireless or a tablet, then it's a mobile device. If it's not a mobile device, is it a smart TV? If it's not a smart TV, then it must be a web browser. Otherwise, if it is a mobile device, then I look and I can say, if it's a tablet, then it'll display this is a tablet. Otherwise, it will say this is a mobile phone. Otherwise, it will say it's a mobile device. Okay? The whole thing thought of this includes us having that code at the beginning that hooks us up to those Werfel repository and the libraries, calling the code, and then going in and testing the capabilities of the particular device we get, and then doing something with it. All right? 
I want to look at your textbook. If you don't have the textbook, I'll display it on the screen. I actually, I think I skipped around a little bit, so we're going back to the device databases page. And I want to look at They do something similar to what I did, except they, they put a panic button on there to make the phone link a, a little button that you could press. I want to look starting on page 184 in the book. Because the thought is this, all right? In the example we went over on Monday, we effectively created two different web pages that that one PHP script generated. It generated a mobile page and it generated a full version of the page. We did that by doing our very simple test to see if it was a mobile device or not and based on that we set some variables that said this is mobile, this is full, this is not mobile, this is not full. Now that we know a little bit about Warful, we can get more information about the user agent. We can get, for example, is it a phone? We can get some information about the resolution. Now again, some of that information we might have to take with a grain of salt, but we can inquire on it and get some information uh, about the device. Then we can, instead of having two different pages, we can develop sort of what they would call classes, what they call in the book classes, classes of devices. And in this example, they suggest what they're going to do is develop five different classes. Looking at the bottom of page 185. The classes include the desktop, that is the full, what, what, I, I don't like the word desktop because, you know, you probably are going to use this version on the laptop too, but I would prefer to say full version. There's a tablet version. There is a high mobile version, higher mobile version. There is a simpler mobile version. And there's finally an unsupported that we're going to give, we're going to deliver like a really bare bones page to. This might be like your old flip phones, all right, or something that understands HTML and has a browser, but we can't really make any assumptions about the capabilities of it. And then they define in the little bubbles the criteria, and they have some comments for this. <coughs> Cracks me up just the verbiage they use for unsupported. Is delinquent in any of the totally required makes it sound like we're going to go and arrest it or something. Like, you know, it's, it's really a bad phone. To simplify things, they have gone and created a function in PHP is going to make our life easier. For some characteristics, we're going to look to see if 
the device has that capability. It will be binary, it will be true or false, yes or no. All right. In other cases, it's not binary. You know, what's the resolution? Well, that's not going to be true or false, that's going to be some number. All right. So what this function does is this allows us to give, and again, they're going to put it in an include file, I believe. It's, we're going to give this function the capability that we're interested in, what sort of comparison we're going to do. In other words, are we going to do an equal to comparison? Are we going to do a greater than comparison? And then finally, the value that we're going to compare. And this function will simply return a true or false. So we could ask this function, is this device a phone? We can give it the capability that we're interested in. That is, is it a phone? We can give it the comparison. We're looking for equal. And then we can look for what we're looking for. That is, we're looking for true. Or we can ask for resolution. In other words, does this have a bigger than 600 pixel wide screen? So we could say, we're interested in device width. We want to see if we're comparing, we're doing a greater than comparison. And the value that we're comparing the device with is 600. So this just sort of makes our life easier and just simplifies the code even further. Let's... I want to fast forward. Ah, I'm looking on page one ninety six. On the top of 196 is a code that's going to use that function that we created on the other page and assign one of the, what did we say, five or six different classes to it. So we call our device match function. We ask the, 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 the capability that we're interested in is, is it wireless? We're doing an equal comparison. And we're looking to see if that equals false. If that does equal false, in other words, it's not a wireless, then it must be a desktop. Boom. There you go. So by that simple test, we can tell that it's a desktop and it gets the full version. We're not going to ask any more from it. We can then go and see if there's definite support of stuff that we really need. In other words, does it at least have a resolution of 176? Does this support AJAX? Does this support cookies? Does this support um, secure HTTP? If not, then we know it's unsupported. So we set the class to unsupported. We check to see if it's a tablet. If it's a tablet, then we know it's a tablet. We then check to see if Certain things are true if it's a wireless device, if the resolution width is at least 320, and the browser is like Safari or like Android. Actually, they're doing an OR there. Then we know it's a higher end mobile device. Otherwise, it is a lower end mobile device. The bottom line is the combination of that function that they have on that other page that we looked at that sort of simplifies our job by writing a little function that we can use to test capabilities. All right, that, that kind of simplifies writing this function. And this function, when we're done, device class ought to have one of these five values. I guess the very worst case scenario is it falls through and it gets a value of null, the value that it was initialized with. I'm not sure what you do in that case. So, 
We have our workful code at the beginning of this. We have our function that's going to allow us to test capabilities. We have then at the start of the page, and again, we can put all this stuff in include files, something that's going to look at these different capabilities of the phone and assign one of five different classes to it. And we're going to store that class name in a variable. So we have one, two, three, four, five class, five values that that class can have. We're then going to go and use that variable everywhere in our application to decide what content we're going to include and what content we're not going to include. Really, this is just a, a souped up version of the code that I had um, where I set a variable is mobile is full. So, On page 206 and 207 and 208, I guess, we see how we actually put this in the, in the, in the practice. Right off the bat, before we do anything, we look to see if it is a simpler mobile device or not. If it's a simpler device, we're going to output HTML, or actually going to output XHTML. Otherwise, we're going to output HTML5. We then have our code that decides which of the style sheets we're going to have. Remember, I think I said a long time ago that all these things that we're talking about are tools in your toolboxes. That one of them doesn't replace the other techniques. All right. So the, the philosophy that we had of uh, progressive enhancement still holds. We're going to apply potentially multiple style sheets depending on what kind of device it is. So if it's a desktop, a tablet, or unsupported, we treat it like a desktop and apply a desktop style sheet. If it's a low-end mobile or a high-end mobile, we apply a mobile style sheet. Again, with all the features that you do with a mobile style sheet, you know, make it single, single column probably instead of multiple columns and so on down the line. Here's where the progressive enhancement kicks in. If we're on a high-end device, we're going to do more with our style. So we are going to add a second style sheet if we're on a high-end mobile device. That's on the bottom of page 206. Now, Keep in mind, this recipe, that's something they came up with. All right? In other words, they chose to treat tablets like desktops. We could choose to treat tablets like high-end mobile devices if we wanted to. All right? So the way that they decided which style sheet to apply, that was their decision. You wouldn't necessarily do it exactly this way. I might do, I might do it a little bit different way than this if I was structuring it. I may have, for example, a different style sheet if it was unsupported versus a desktop device. If it was unsupported, I'd probably have a very, very bare bones style sheet. Again, this is the same old concept though of progressive enhancement that we saw before. All right? Especially between the simple mobile and the extreme mobile, or the, uh, not extreme, but higher mobile. We don't need to use media queries because our server-side code is doing that job for us. Our server-side code is determining something about the device and allowing us to choose what code we're going to show or not show. 
But the idea is still the same. We're deciding what style sheet is going to get applied. If we then look on page 207, we can decide what content will be supplied. For example, if the device is unsupported, we're not going to display the shop, on, uh, shop online link. If we're on a desktop, we're going to display some flash. Otherwise, we're going to display something else, maybe just a static image. Then finally, if we're on a tablet or a desktop, we may display some ads that might clutter the picture if we're on a mobile device. We then have a separate navigation if they're on one of the two kinds of mobile devices. The specifics of like what they do with those five classes is less important than the process that they're going through. They have code that looks at the capabilities of the device and assigns it to one of a handful of classes. There is then code that customizes the page dynamically generates the page, taking into account the class that we put it into. So the specifics that they're doing, you know, they're hiding sub-navigation, they're showing other navigation, they're hiding flash, they're showing flash. The specific is less important than the fact that once we decide where it fits in, we can decide what content is appropriate for that particular kind of device. So these are the choices that they made in this example. That doesn't mean that all of, our, all of our examples are going to look exactly like this. We may have identical navigation throughout all of them. We might not have any differences in navigation depending on the device, but we might. All right? It's not uncommon to have different navigations based on the device simply because, again, the needs of someone browsing your site with a mobile browser are different than someone that's that's going to be browsing from a desktop browser. Again, the most important part here is the process that we went through by using the Werfel database and API and writing some code. We can assign one of several different classes and then we can go and based on those classes we can decide what content to include or what content not to include. Really, it's like I did in the example on Monday, except I only did two classes. I only did mobile and full. Here they're doing a full range of it based on different capabilities. All right. There's some more details about this, uh, about that, but y you can read through those. Uh, I think I went a little out of order, by the way, in this class. Uh, I think I covered uh, jQuery Mobile before we covered Werfel, and I think in the syllabus it's the other way around. But you can you can uh, make that uh, adjustment. Questions over any of this? What you'll likely do for your next assignment after break is you're likely to have, and again, this will have to be deployed on our server unless you're going to take the time to uh, install Werfel on your, your server. Um, it probably would, be, probably would be better, though, to use our server because that's already been installed and, and we've worked out, I believe, knock on wood, most of the issues. But you'll have to do something like this where you'll take and you'll assign, based on some criteria, three, diff you know, three different classes, five different classes, whatever, and then create, dynamically generate different pages depending on the class. Any questions about any of this? 
Next week, as you know, is spring break, so have fun. Um, it's a good time to catch up. Um, I will be checking online, so if you have questions, feel free to continue to ask them. Alrighty.